This is the first video on the first chapter from C4 on partial fractions. In this video we're going to look at the concept behind it and a couple of simpler examples. So first of all, um, you, you should all at this stage have plenty of experience of dealing with algebraic fractions, things like this. So um, you'd have done them at GCSE, you did them a little bit in um, C3 as well, where something like that, you would get yourself a common denominator so it was, it was all about bringing these two fractions together as a single fraction with a common denominator. Partial fractions is the reverse of that. So we're taking a single fraction and we're splitting it up into its partial fractions. So um, we're going to look at an example such as this. So we've got um, 6x minus 2 as the numerator and we've got x squared minus 2x minus 3 on the denominator. My first step, um, I'm going to factorise the denominator so I can see what I want my two fractions to be. So I'm going to factorise the denominator first of all. The numerator is going to stay exactly the same for now. And I'm going to factorise the denominator and I will get, uh, it's going to be an x minus 3 and an x plus 1, I think. Yeah, okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to split this up. Now I'm not quite sure what's going to be on my numerator for each of my individual fractions. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say that this is going to be the same as something over x minus 3 plus something over x plus 1. Okay, so these are my two separate fractions. What I need to do now is to figure out what a is and what b is. So, I'm going uh, and now I'm going to do the reverse process. I'm going to think, well, if I multiply this out and bring these fractions together, I should get 6x minus 2. So, if I were to get these as, as a common denominator, my common denominator is going to be my x minus 3x plus 1. So, in order to get that, I would multiply this fraction by the x plus 1. So, I would have a multiplied by x plus 1 plus b multiplied by the x minus 3. All of that is with my common denominator of x minus 3 x plus 1. So, if this fraction is to be the same as the fraction that I began with, then my numerator, my ax plus 1 plus b times x minus 3, that has to be the same as 6x minus 2. So the 6x minus 2 must equal my, uh, my numerator here. So I'm just going to write that down as an equation. So the 6x minus 2 was on my numerator at the top, and that's going to equal my numerator. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I want to know what a is and I want to know what b is. There's a really quick, simple trick that I can use to do this. I'm going to say let x equals 3. By doing that, over on the right hand side over here, when x equals 3, 3 minus 3 over here will cancel out to be 0. So what that allows me to do is to ignore the b part to begin with and just focus on the a. So when x is 3, 6 times 3, take away 2, so 6 times 3 is 18, take away 2, so I will have 16 on the left hand side. Over on the right hand side I've got a multiplied by 3 plus 1, so I've got 4a, and as I said, the b part is going to completely disappear, because when x is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, b times 0 is 0. So from this, straight away I can see this, that, uh, I can see straight away that a is going to be 4. So I know a is 4. got A, I now need to work out what B is going to be. So for this one, I want the A to disappear. 
in order for this bit to disappear, I'm going to say let x be equal to minus 1. Because when x is minus 1, minus 1 plus 1 will be 0, and this is going to disappear now. So when x is minus 1, okay, so 6 times minus 1 is going to be minus 6. Subtract 2, so I will have minus 8. Over on the right hand side, as I said, this will disappear because the minus 1 plus 1 will be 0. And over here I'm going to have b multiplied by minus 1 take away uh, 3, which is going to be minus 4. So I'm going to have a minus 4b. Looking at this now, I can see minus 8 divided by the minus 4 is going to give me 2. So I can see that my b is 2. Okay, so I know A, I know B, so now I can go back to the, um, the way I wrote the question out in the first place, which was that A over X minus 3 plus B over X plus 1, and I can substitute my values of A and B into this. So I can now say that my partial fractions is going to be A, which is 4, over X minus 3 plus B, which is 2, divided by the x plus 1. So what I have done here is I have taken my single, uh, fra my single fraction and I have split it up into two separate partial fractions.